major one is the uh, Student Performance Center and um, the construction fence is up. The first phase of the project is utility work, so not all that exciting. Most people will be disappointed to know that there's not much to see because most of the stuff is being done underground. So there probably won't be any real movement until later in the summer. But then the uh, other parking lot will will go under construction here shortly. So when that happens, then it'll start looking like there's a lot going on. The Hilton project is most that will is sorry, is um, still way early in the initial conceptual and design phase. So probably not anything substantial there until into the basketball season. The earliest they probably would start doing anything over there is after next, like after commencement a year from now. Uh, you know, clearly getting in and out of the stadium on the north end will be, especially to the west side, will be uh, a little bit of a challenge this fall. But, um, you know, we'll work our way through that. Same thing for just anybody going from the football building into the Jacobson building. You know, it's already, you got to go around the construction site. So that'll be a two-year process. But this fall, um, you'll need a little bit of a roadmap to kind of work your way through to the west side. Pretty neat. I mean, so uh, there's still two sports to go, baseball and women's crew, which we don't have either. So, But we should finish third. And um, given that in the history of Iowa State University, they've never finished in the, finished in the upper half one time, and that was 2013, we were fifth. So to be third speaks volumes to uh, the success that our coaches, our student athletes, and our staff have had across the board. Um, I actually was talking to the athletic director at Oklahoma this morning about that exact thing, and you know we were just joking and saying it proves that it's not all money. You know that people actually move mountains, and um, the fact that Iowa State is third. You know there was a stretch back in 2005 when I started that. We were dead last. We were 12th to 12th, like seven or eight years in a row. So to be third in the overall standings is pretty neat. Collect, I mean, collectively, we've just had, uh, it's the best year in the history of Iowa State across the board of using that metric. I mean, there's multiple metrics, but the metric of how do you do in conference is um, pretty phenomenal what we've done. There's changes per se. I mean, uh, we're all going to have to adjust to just what does it mean? You know, and I'm not a doom and gloom. Um, you know, Ten years from now, you know, who knows? Maybe there'll be kiosks and you can do it inside a, you know, facility. Right now, that's not the case, and I think that that was good is to slow play it. So um, some of the restrictions that they put in that'll prevent anybody betting on a prop bet, which essentially means don't bet on the uh, student athlete, um, I think is the right thing to do because in the end, what ends up happening is you follow the money. Somebody will get corrupted along the way, and when somebody gets corrupted, then everybody will start pointing fingers of how did that happen? And when that happens, dominoes start to fall, and schools will get penalized, and I just don't want to see that happen at Iowa State. We'll have to judge that over time. I mean, it'll, um, education will be a big part of it, but monitoring is a huge part of it. And, you know, that's probably not our area of expertise. When you talk to the folks in Las Vegas, they'll tell you that you know the the Las Vegas or not the, the Nevada Gaming Association does a lot of that so I just wonder in the state of Iowa who's going to do that uh, my guess is it's not on their radar screen which means the responsibility or the uh, accountability will fall back to the individual schools and you know that's that's pretty daunting because that's not it's not our area of expertise nor are we ever going to be able to ramp up to do that well is there a revenue stream there for schools in terms of vetting? That no. You guys are no, there isn't. Not in the state of Iowa. The, I mean, the legislators will use that money however they choose to use it, but there's no talk about it coming back to athletics. Well, yeah, that, that went by the wayside in the state. So, um, you know, so the ultimate answer to that, Travis, is time will tell. I don't think any of us really know. It's uncharted territory. Uh, you know, again, I like to approach things of not doom and gloom, just matter of fact. It's a change. We're going to have to watch it, try to figure out how to deal with it. But I'm also, you know, the world's not going to end because they're doing it. Like with the big, my guess not. But you know, who knows what ten years from now will be socially acceptable? Today, that probably would be really frowned upon. You know, I think that that's another area where we're kind of treading lightly, trying to figure out, you know, what's the 
what's the fine line between HIPAA and student athlete rights and the information that technically is there and who has access to it. And if people are going to access it for their own gain, then should we coalesce it and use it for our own gain as a league? So um, I think everyone's trying to figure that out.